Hello, so in today's video I basically wanted to talk about Rocksteady. They finally announced, um, I meant, meant to make a video about this kind of around the day it happened, but just been busy with life. But uh, they made, they announced, uh, I think it was Friday, um, what they're doing next. Um, now that they're done with the Batman Arkham games and there have been rumors and speculation for a while about what they're doing, you know, were they doing a Superman game or, you know, whatnot. And uh, it turns out they're doing a Suicide Squad game. Now, I personally don't know how to feel about doing a Suicide Squad game, but at the same time, I absolutely loved the uh, Batman Arkham games that you know Rocksteady did. Rock, um, they're some of my favorite video games of all time. Uh, in particular, Night is, I'd say, my third favorite game of all time. City is probably about my fifth. Um, Origins, which wasn't made by Rocksteady, but still part of the uh, canyon, if you will, is up there too for me. And Asylum isn't quite as high, but still relatively high, like top 25, 30. So it's a franchise that, I've, that I really love. And the reason I mention that is that even though I'm not really sure what to think about a Suicide Squad game, because I just have a lot of questions. You know, how's it in a play? How's it in a look? Um... It looked like there was Superman on the cover. I know some people thought it was Zod. It's hard to tell if it was. I didn't see anything that would make me think that, but they do look basically the same, Zod and Superman, so it'd be hard to say. But, yeah, I just I don't know how this is going to play. Like, are you fighting Superman straight up? Or you, I, there's been talk about maybe you're fighting, like, the Flash and Superman and Batman and stuff as the Suicide Squad characters, but then it's kind of like, well, how are some of those characters going to maybe stand a chance against someone that's crazy fast like the Flash or that's fast plus powerful like Superman and stuff? Um, you know, Kryptonite, I guess, with Superman, but what about the Flash? You know, I don't know. Um, so, I mean, if that's the case and you're finding those, that maybe could be interesting. It just kind of depends on what characters are you playing it as and how did they each control. Is this a straight-up single-player game? Um, is it like the Avengers game where there's going to be basically updates and um, whatnot? Or is it just like a standard single player game? So really I just have a lot of questions um, when it comes to this. But because of the fact that I liked the Batman Arkham games so much, I have been for a while just dying to know what Rocksteady's been up to. No matter if it was something that it turns out I have no interest in or if it turns out to be something I'm kind of like, hmm, not sure what to think. And then maybe I don't like it, or I do like it, What, whatever. Also, I'd rather like it, but just knowing is good, because it was driving me nuts, just that not knowing when it comes to Rocksteady. But uh, the good thing, too, about this is that even though they didn't give us a lot, it was just simply a little uh, Twitter, or Twitter, uh, Twitter announcement with the photo, whatever. It did show us when we're going to get, actually, um, more news about this, which is... Basically, DC is doing a video game thing from what I thought at first was that it was straight up like all uh, Warner Brother stuff. Um, so I thought we'd see like Harry Potter there perhaps since there's been rumors about a Harry Potter game after that there was like a leak Harry Potter video from a game or something a while back. But it sounds like it's actually going to be more of just a um, DC video game thing. And so it sounds like we're going to probably get... Uh, to go along with Suicide Squad, and that's Batman game announced there, and uh, also um, maybe Injustice or something, not quite sure um, on that one actually, but uh, Injustice 3, I mean, but yeah, what's good about this is, like I said, is that we just know the date, it's August, 27th, August 22nd, um, don't know the time, but August 22nd, it might be a time, I just haven't seen it, but the fact that we know the uh, date is just good, you know, 20 seconds, not that far off, really. You know, it's a little less than two weeks now. And so it's just good to know that we have that date and when to expect it now. And exciting that we know that, you know, because now we don't have to wait too long to actually get a trailer and to actually perhaps get a gameplay video and maybe some, you know, interview stuff and just, over, you know, just a general overview of the game to see exactly what it's going to be. Um, so that we don't have to, you know, speculate too long about how the game's going to look and play and all that. So, yeah, I'm just really hopeful that the game will be good because of, you know, what they did with the Batman games. But just not really sure. Um, I'm just wondering what ideas you guys have in the comments in terms of 
are you excited for this? Are you not? Or are you kind of like me where you're like, well, I'm sort of excited because of the past, but I'm not really sure what to expect from a Suicide Squad game and how it'll work, how it'll look and everything. And do you have any ideas of how you think it might look and play and feel and all that? And then the second part of this is that on that same day, the 22nd, it's sounding like we're finally going to get the next Batman Arkham game uh, announced by um, Warner Brothers March We All. I'm more excited for this currently than the Rocksteady game, but that's just because I don't really know what to expect, like I said, from the Suicide Squad game. So I feel like I have a little more of an idea of what to expect from the Batman game, uh, even though it's, you know, Warner Brothers March We All, not Rocksteady, but just based off what we've seen in the franchise before. And it sounded like it might be a soft reboot. Now, I don't know exactly what that entails. I would imagine the one thing that will definitely keep intact and perhaps try to even improve even more somehow is the combat. The Batman Arkham games combat has always been so, so good. Um, just a lot of variety to it. It's one of those things where it's easy to kind of learn, but hard to, I guess, um, master, if you will, the combat. But it's just heck of fun, the combat in the Arkham games. There's a lot of things in the Arkham games that make it good, but that's one of the first things that comes to my mind. When I think of the Batman Arkham games, there's been a lot of games too that have kind of based their combat or been inspired by the uh, Batman Arkham combat. But yeah, it's just great to know that we're probably going to finally, finally get that game revealed because basically back, I think it was like October last year or something, Warner Brothers March We All was teasing to the point where everybody thought they were basically going to announce the game any day now. <laughs> Or if anything, by the Video Game Awards. Now, here we are, and it's going to have been 10 months or so from then by the time we get the announcement, if we do indeed get the announcement on the 22nd. And so I think that's just horrible marketing to tease that hard and then wait nearly a year before you officially actually announce the darn thing. Now, the interesting part of this, too, is that it sounds like the Suicide Squad game might be a 2021 game, and the Batman Arkham game by Montreal might be a uh, November game this year. Now, in, in the past, I would say no chance because of the fact that from August to October is not a lot of time to kind of market a game. You know, especially a AAA Batman uh, game. But at the same time, you know, it could happen because this, weird's just been, this year has just been weird with COVID going on and everything. We've had... Uh, Nintendo actually has, you know, not done a direct for a while and kind of shadow dropped um, official game announcements on YouTube and without really a ton of time. I think it was only like two months or something from the time we got the uh, Paper Mario announcement to the time the game came out. It was like two, three months, something like that. Not a lot of time at all. And then Pikmin 3, which just got announced the... Uh, port and yeah it's a port but still not a big you know um time period either really when you consider it just got announced and it's coming out at the end of october you know it's not like a year or six month um announcement to release date or anything like that that you would kind of expect typically so that because of that i think it could happen in november but in terms of what i would like to see uh, or in in terms of uh, the Batman Arkham game, if it is indeed going to happen, be a November game, it, I think it would be awesome for a couple reasons, which is one, I just love the Batman Arkham games, and I know some people have said they feel like that the franchise has kind of run its course, but personally I feel like there's still some things they can do to keep the game fresh enough, but at the same time not make it too different, which is always an important thing. With any video game franchise or even movie franchise, um, I think one important, very important, the very imp one very, very important thing I think is that um, basically you have to find a balance when it comes to making it different enough, but not too different. Because when you make things too different, then you have people that complain, well, you know, this isn't what I expected. This game's crap or this movie's crap or, you know, it just doesn't feel like it should. It doesn't seem like it belongs in the franchise or whatever. But then if you change it not enough, then you have people that say, well, this game just feels too much like the other ones and doesn't do enough new things kind of thing. And so, yeah, I do think that's important. But the reason I feel like personally they can do still enough is, and after I say these, or, and um, in the comments I'd just like to see your guys' thoughts in terms of what would you like to see in the Batman Arkham game 
And do you kind of agree with my ideas of what I'd like to see um, in terms of new things and just improvements and stuff? But personally, in terms of the Batman Arkham game and how I feel like it can still feel fresh enough is, one, um, the Batman Arkham games, even though they did get bigger and bigger, they weren't ever gigantic. So if you could make them gigantic, you know, world, that might, you know, help it fresh enough. Um, that's kind of my least bit when it comes to, you know, worries about this game or what I'd like to see perhaps, though. Um, my other idea is I feel like I'm more important. But basically, I'd like to see more of a dynamic city in terms of actually having, like, civilians and stuff around. The other Batman games were very um, just you and, like, the villains and stuff. Not really a lot of civilians around and stuff because it was, like, a evacuation of the city type of thing. But I would really like to see a populated city. I feel like that would be something that would make it feel a lot different than the other Arkham games. And it's something that I thought uh, Spider-Man did pretty well on PS4. Um, so I don't see why, you know, if they were able to do that, why Batman can't do something similar and have a populated city. So I think that's important. Dynamic weather and uh, day-night cycles, I think, is something to, you know, and Batman Arkham uh, Origins, we had snow, basically. City was basically uh, rain or kind of, uh, yeah, rain um, kind of thing uh, or, or uh, night was definitely all rain, but yeah, so we've had some rain and snow and um, even some fog, like if you look at Asylum and stuff, but never really had a dynamic where it can change, so that's something I'd like to see, you know, maybe it goes from heavy rain to not raining at all to snow or whatever, um, day-night cycles, I know people say that Batman works well in the dark or at night or whatever, but I'd still like to see, you know, Batman in the day and stuff, because how you can't just fight at night, you know, there's, there's going to be crime happening during the daytime too. Um, you know, muggings and stuff like that, I think, are definitely happen more at night. But, you know, because people just don't want to mug someone out in the clear day where it's easy to see. Uh, but it's not like they don't happen. Um, and Batman has, you know, nothing to deal with during the day. So, you know, no matter if it's a mugging or something more, you know, severe. But yeah, I'd like to see day-night the weather, um, and then the other thing, the other two main things I thought of besides the day night and, uh, you know, more populated city is something that's already sort of been in the franchise, but you could alter it, which is we had the Batmobile and Arkham Knight. I personally did love the Batman Arkham, uh, Knight, uh, Batmobile. Um, the gameplay with it was fun and, and a lot and stuff, and a lot of people complain that they used it too much. Now, I do think they did use it a little too much, but I don't think it's as bad as some people say. Like, some people say it ruined the game. Wouldn't go that far at all, because, like I said, it is my third favorite game, but I do think they went a little overboard. And I think if we brought back the Arkham, uh, in the Arkham game, brought back the Batmobile, but instead of having it used for, like, everything, if you just had it more as, like, a way to kind of get around throughout the city, um, to go with the... the uh, gliding uh, type of thing that would be better than having it be used for a whole bunch of like tank fights and stuff and maybe have some chases but not a ton um, type of thing like I did like when you chase Firefly with the Batmobile in Arkham Knight so stuff like that like chases and um, just another way to get around but less you know puzzle based with the Batmobile and stuff like that um, I think that would be a good way to bring the Batmobile back and still have it not feel too overbearing or too used or whatever. And then my final thing is, unlike the Batmobile, I thought it was a good feature, but underused. Which is, in uh, Arkham Knight, they added a, basically a feature called like dual play, dual play, which is basically where you're when you're fighting, depending on who you're playing as, you can switch between the two characters. So like if you're playing as Batman and Robin, you can switch between them. If it's Catwoman and Batman. You can go from Batman to Catwoman, Catwoman to Batman kind of thing. And I thought it was a really nice feature um, that worked really well and that looked really cool, you know, doing the different takedowns of the characters and switching back and forth and everything. But it was underused. And the reason I say it was underused was there was really only a couple times throughout the game's story that you had to uh, use it. And then even with the challenge maps and stuff, uh, which the challenge maps is one of the things, too, that makes the Batman Arkham games really fun they add a ton of replay value because i can play the 
challenge maps over and over and over and just have so much fun. It's just so addictive to play the challenge maps over, especially the combat ones, uh, compared to the Predator and just trying to, you know, beat your combat score and get a higher combo each and every time. Um, but, uh, as I was saying with the dual play, they didn't use a ton of that in the challenge maps either. I think there was only a few challenge maps that really had that. So basically, I think bring that feature back and have it used more often, you know, have it be, um, I wouldn't even mind if it was kind of like the Batmobile for Arkham Knight. And what I mean by that is just that it would be like something that you use a ton like you did with the Batmobile, but this time dual play. I think that would be great, especially if the, you know, rumors are true that you can play or the, the game's going to have like, uh, you know, multiple Bat family members like, you know, Robin and um, Batgirl and stuff like that. And then I think it would really make sense to, you know, have that ability to play it not just play segments or whatever is one, be able to switch back and forth in combat, helping each other fight. I think that would be awesome. Um, so yeah, those are basically my main uh, thoughts when it comes to ways I could keep that franchise. I feel like personally fresh for at least the one more game is as I just to kind of recap is day night cycles, dynamic weather, um, populated city, Less Batmobile, but used more for, like, chases and stuff. Um, and just a way to get around. And, uh, last, dull play, use it more. It was a great feature at night, but underused. So those are my five ideas. If you like this video, comment below in terms of what ideas would you like to see in the Batman Arkham game. And which game are you more excited for? Are you excited for the Suicide Squad game or the Batman game? And in terms of the Suicide Squad game... What would you like to see or what you think might be um, how the game kind of looks and controls and plays and the story and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks and uh, subscribe below.